Alright, in this video I'm going to talk about graphing piecewise defined functions. And a piecewise defined function is kind of what it sounds like it should be. It's a function that's defined in separate pieces. So instead of having a single formula or a single equation, it's broken up into different equations. So here our piecewise defined function that we want to graph is the function x plus 1 and we're going to graph this on the interval from negative 3 to 0 and then we're going to graph x squared on the interval from 0 to 2. So you know obviously to graph piecewise defined functions you have to know what the graphs of each piece look like beforehand. Um, if not you know you're, you're going to have a real hard time doing this but suppose we want to graph this first piece first so um, I'm labeling that in red just to hopefully help distinguish it a little bit so think about the graph y equals x plus 1 that's what we're going to graph here first and in a second we're going to graph um, the function y equals x squared so usually to do these basically all I do is um, I look at the interval here so negative 3 if you plug negative 3 into, if you plug negative 3 in for x, you'll get negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. So if this is negative, whoops, let me give, move this up here a little bit. So if this is negative 2 down here, it says, well, at negative 3, you're going to be at negative 2. So here's the point, negative 3 comma negative 2. And if you even though you don't use the value x equals zero still plug it in to kinda of give yourself kind of a reference point if you plug zero into the function y equals x you'll get one out so if you put a point at zero comma one but since it's strictly less than what you do is you make an open circle instead of a solid point like we had here before and then all you do is you just play connect the dots so my graph is not very good I'm not a, a great artist this is supposed to be a linear function with an open circle here okay so this is the graph of y equals x plus 1 and now we're gonna do the same thing to graph y equals x squared okay so to graph y equals x squared, I'm going to use the first point, which is 0. If you plug 0 in, well, if you plug 0 in for x, you'll get y equals 0 out. So that means 0, 0 is on the graph. And since it's less than or equal to, you use a solid dot. And now we'll do the same thing for the end point of 2. If you plug 2 in, well, 2 squared is 4. So that means 2 comma 4 is a point on the graph so and since it's less than or equal to I'll put a solid dot there and again you play connect the dots and remembering that y equals x squared looks like a parabola in this case we're only getting the right half of the parabola okay so this is now the graph of this piecewise defined function x plus 1 on the interval negative 3 to 0 and then x squared on the interval 0 to 2. Okay, so again, what you're doing is, if you think about the graph of y equals x plus 1, normally it looks like, you know, the line that the pen looks like, but you're chopping it off. You're only looking, you're only using the parts that correspond to the x coordinates between negative 3 and 0, which is this part. Likewise, you go to graph y equals x squared, which is the parabola, but you're only graphing the, 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 the part that corresponds to the x-coordinates between 0 and 2. Okay, So sorry for shifting this back and forth here. Um, let's look at one other one here as well. If I can find where it went. Alright, so here's the other one. And this time we've got three parts. Okay. So I've got y equals x, I'll graph that one in red. So I'm going to graph y equals x in red. I'll graph y equals 2 in black. 
just to help distinguish it. And then y equals square root of x, again in red, just to hopefully help bust it up a little bit. So I do the same thing. I plug, I look at the first point, which is negative 3. So I'm looking at this first equation now. So if you plug negative 3 in for x, you'll get y equals negative 3. So that means the point negative 3 comma negative 3 is on the graph. And likewise, since it's less than or equal to, it's supposed to be less than or equal to, if you plug 0 in for x, you'll get the y coordinate of 0 out. So we'll put a solid dot there. And y equals x is just kind of a 45 degree line, so it'll look like that. Whoops, I forgot to graph it in red. Oh well, sorry. Um, so I'll just graph them all in black here, okay? So for the next one, y equals 2. Now I'm looking at the first coordinate that corresponds to that. Well, y equals 2, again, is just a flat line. It's a horizontal line. Um, and you're drawing a horizontal line everywhere where the y coordinate is 2. But since it's strictly less than, what we do is when it's less than, we put open circles. So less than, we put open circles. Less than or equal to, we use solid circles. And then it says it's going to look like the function y equals 2 up until the x coordinate of 1. And then I just again play connect the dots. Okay, last but not least, I have to do y equals square root of x, so I didn't forget this time, I will graph this one in red. Again, if you plug 1 in to square root of x, well, the square root of 1 is 1, so I'll put a solid dot here at 1. And now I'll go over to 4. Well, if you plug 4 into the square root function, the square root of 4 is 2, but again, since it's less than, I make an open circle. And remember that y equals square root of x. So here's y equals square root of x. Looks roughly like that. So all I'm really getting is kind of the part from 1 to 4. So I'll make it look like that. So I'll play connect the dots. So I'm only getting kind of this portion of the graph up here. Okay. So Here's the part of y equals square root of x that corresponds to the x coordinates from 1 to 4. Okay, so I know um, you know when I teach graphing piecewise um, defined functions is one of these things that often gives people um, you know some problems. So definitely these two examples maybe try to work them on your own. You know, graph the entire function, but then again just kind of think about you're only using the parts that correspond to certain x-coordinates. So I hope these two examples help, maybe shed a little light on this. If you have other questions, feel free to take a look at my website. I've got tons of videos on there. Also feel free to shoot me an email um, if you've got any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I can.